Chapter 2 Internal Energy, Work, Heat, and Enthalpy. Section 2.3 Heat. Heat flows from a higher temperature region to a lower temperature region. Heat is transitory. That means heat is not associated with the state of the system. Heat is associated with how the state of the system changes. If we are given the initial and final states of a system, there's no way for us to calculate the amount of heat Q until more information is provided for the entire process. And in practice, we often need to calculate work and the change of internal energy delta U first. And then we use this equation to calculate Q. Delta U is equal to Q plus W for a closed system. Now let's look at example problem 2.3.1. We'll calculate Q involved in three different processes. A. A 20 liter ideal gas with 4 bar pressure expands to 80 liters against 1 bar external pressure. Let's assume the process is isothermal. If the process is isothermal, that means there's no temperature change. And temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy for a closed system. If the temperature is constant, that means the average kinetic energy is constant. There's no change in kinetic energy. And also, for an ideal gas, its potential energy is always zero. Based on the analysis of the kinetic energy and the potential energy, we know delta U is zero. There's no change in the internal energy of this ideal gas. Therefore, we can compute W first and then Q is equal to negative W. W is negative integral P external dV. Plugging all the numbers, work is negative 64 liters. Therefore, for this ideal gas in an isothermal process, Q is negative W is 60 bar liters. Also, we'll know what's Q surroundings. Q surroundings is always negative Q. Now let's look at another process. A 20 liter ideal gas expands to 40 liters against a 2 bar external pressure. And then it further expands from 40 liters to 80 liters against 1 bar external pressure. There are two steps, so we can compute the work in step 1 and the work in step 2, and then we can sum it up. Work is negative 80 bar liters. And because the kinetic energy of this ideal gas remains unchanged in this isothermal process, the potential energy of an ideal gas is always zero. We have delta U is equal to zero. Therefore, Q is delta U minus W. And we get 80 bar liters because, again, delta U is zero because there's no change in its potential energy or its kinetic energy. The third process, this gas expands against 80 liters under this condition. P external is equal to P in the entire process. And again, we can compute W. W is equal to negative 111 bar liters. Therefore, Q is positive 111 bar liters. And also, we can get the amount of work done on the surroundings, which is 111 bar liters, and also we can compute Q for the surroundings, which is just negative 111 bar liters. After 20 liter, ideal gas expands to 80 liters against 1 bar external pressure, uh, followed by the compression, isothermal compression, against a uh, P external of 4 bars the system returns to its original state after this cyclic process. The initial state is 20 liters and 4 bar pressure. The final state is also 20 liters and 4 bar pressure. So since this is a cyclic process, we know delta U is going to be zero. However, neither W nor Q is zero. We can compute W for this two-step cyclic process. It's 100 bar liters. 
and then we can compute Q. Q is delta U minus W, which is negative 180 bar liters. Actually, we do not have to uh, analyze the kinetic energy change and potential energy change for this gas because if a process is a cyclic process and because U is a state function, the system returns to its original state after a cyclic process. Therefore, delta U is always zero for any cyclic process. So we can just simply say Q is negative W. All right, the net effect of this cyclic process is that the surroundings does some work to the system and it loses energy in the form of heat. Uh, heat and work cancel so that delta U is zero. After the cyclic process, the system returns to its original state. And because pressure, volume, temperature, entropy, internal energy, enthalpy, Helmholtz energy, Gibbs energy, are all state functions, their values should remain unchanged after this cyclic process. The initial value and the final value of all those state functions should be exactly the same. But there might be something done to the surroundings. Later we'll see the entropy of the surroundings increases in these two-step processes. Therefore, this process is called an irreversible process. If we maintain P external uh, is equal to P in the entire process, then this process is called a reversible process. The entropy of the system and the entropy of the surroundings remain constant. So after this cyclic process, uh, uh, W is zero, Q is zero, delta U is zero, nothing has changed. There's no net change in the system nor in its surroundings. And such a cyclic process is called a reversible cyclic process. Again, I want to mention the condition for this cyclic process. You have to maintain this equation. P external is equal to P. Again, if P external is equal to P in the entire cyclic process of expansion and compression, both the system and the surroundings return to their original state after such a cycle. And also, the entropy of the system and the entropy of the surroundings remain unchanged. Therefore, the entropy of the entire universe remains unchanged. That's the basis of the reversibility of any process. Uh, in theory, a reversible expansion or compression is achieved only when P external is equal to P. And uh, when P external is equal to P, there's no net force. So somehow we need to imagine uh, during the expansion, <coughs> the system pressure is just slightly greater than the external pressure. During compression, uh, the system pressure is slightly smaller than the external pressure. Uh, the difference between the system pressure and the external pressure is infinitesimal. So sometimes we use delta P to uh, denote this infinitesimal difference. Now we're going to use two graphs to depict the uh, irreversible isothermal expansion and compression. So over here, uh, this is irreversible expansion. So again, we have a initial volume of 20 liters a final volume of 80 liters. Uh, this is a irreversible expansion. P external is not equal to P in the entire process. So if we go from left to right, we can see the volume increases. The P external is a constant. The system pressure, however, changes. So again, P external is different from P. And we can compute the amount of work using the equation uh, negative integral P external dV and Q is equal to negative W because again this is a isothermal process 
uh, for an ideal gas, therefore the kinetic energy change is zero. The potential energy change is zero. Therefore, delta U is zero. Q is equal to negative W. Over here, this is a graph for irreversible compression. The external is set to be four bars. We are compressing this system with a constant four bar external pressure. We can compute the amount of work easily using this equation. Negative integral P external dV. And again, Q is equal to uh, negative W only because delta U is zero. Delta U is zero only because there's no potential energy change. There's no kinetic energy change.